Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. There is a huge interstellar object that is hurtling through our solar system at this moment in time. This is 3i Atlas, and no one really knows what 3i Atlas is, so I call it an interstellar object. The mainstream view is that it is an interstellar comet. There is a large group of people that are saying that it's some sort of alien technology either sent to monitor the solar system, perhaps even to send some ships out when it's at its superior conjunction as viewed from Earth. That'd be October 21st because it'll be blocked by the light of the sun in front of it. And then there's some people saying it's a PSYOP. Others are saying that it's some um, galactic fleet returning back to liberate Earth. There's a whole bunch of ideas as to 3i Atlas, what it is, what it's going to do, whether it's even real or not. And well, here on this channel, we're devoted to the truth and what is actually 3i Atlas and what is actually happening in our solar system with the sun, the earth, other planets, and more. So there is new data that has just been released on 3i Atlas, some new optical imagery showing that 3i Atlas is evolving. It has changed since when we first picked it up to where it is now in the solar system. And this is a common feature of comets that they start to undergo changes as they get closer and closer to the sun. And so let's go right into that. We'll see how 3i Atlas has been evolving. Here though is our optical imagery from July 3rd, just a couple days after it was first picked up by the Atlas Observatory. That's why you have the Atlas in the name of 3i Atlas. And this is our green optical band, our red optical band, our infrared optical band, and then some information here, image at about 3.4 astronomical units from the Earth. Well, some time has passed and now we have new imagery from August 27th, and this is via Gemini South, whereas this July 3rd imagery is from NGPS, and we have the same optical bands here, though the exposure times are different. For example, this is 150 seconds right there. This one there is only 60 seconds, but we have our ultraviolet band, our green, our red, our infrared, we see our nanometer wavelengths of light right there. The visible light spectrum is 380 to 750 nanometers. And this is image from 2.59 astronomical units from Earth. So again, geocentric. Can you see the difference now in these images? There is some changes in the scale as we can tell, but what you'll notice is that 3i Atlas went from this kind of round, diffuse, dimmer object to now clearly having a anti-sunward tail. Because here is our sunward direction. We also see this plotted up there. And as it has gotten closer to the sun, it has finally evolved a typical cometary tail. So there is a lot of interesting things as it relates to 3i Atlas, but we are now seeing more normal cometary behavior from it, at least as observed with this composite imagery taken on August 27th via Gemini South. This is down in South America. There's also Gemini North that's up in Hawaii. We have an image from earlier taken by Gemini North. So this is very clearly now looking like some sort of comet, though it does have a lot of features that are quite different than any sort of comet that we have basically seen fly through our solar system. Here we have our James Webb Space Telescope data and we see that it has this very diffuse coma around it. And so these are different wavelengths of light. This is 1.2 micrometers, 4.3, 2.7, 4.7. They correspond to different chemicals or elements. And so for example, right here, 2.7, that is the spectrum for water. And then we have CO2 and we also have carbon monoxide. And so we're seeing that it has a huge amount of carbon dioxide in this envelope of gas and dust that's surrounding it. And if you have gas, if you have dust in space and you're near a star, you have plasma. So in fact, this coma is a complex dusty plasma, which has a whole bunch of interesting, unique electromagnetic signatures to it. For example, you can have these dust acoustic waves that are in that tens of Hertz zone that can propagate through a complex dusty plasma. You also have these ion acoustic waves and you can have complex dusty plasma organized into areas of hot and cold and they form these boundary layers and they have this sort of 
crystalline structure that they can form under unique situations. So they can actually take on these different crystalline shapes. It's not just a random chaotic disordered mess like a typical gas is, right? You open up a gas canister in a room, they all just start flying everywhere. A complex dusty plasma because the dust grains accumulate a lot of charge, they become electromagnetically active. That force is 10 to 36 times more powerful than the force of gravity. Now gravity is effectively irrelevant. And as you get closer and closer to the sun, a lot of the neutral gas, as it's called, that's not ionized, will ionize due to solar radiation, ultraviolet, extreme ultraviolet, X-ray flux, and also from plasma, the solar wind, being emitted from the sun, hitting these molecules and causing some degree of ionization. There will be a degree of recombination that occurs between an ion and an electron, but you'll always have some amount of plasma. So as 3i Atlas has gone closer and closer to the sun, it has expanded its coma and it's now formed this tail. And what you'll see here is that this coma surrounding it in the visible wavelengths is quite large. Here we're looking primarily at like the dust. We see it's about 25,000 kilometers across. This was imaged there. This is right at the beginning when we first saw it, so further out. It's expanded since then. If we look at our Sphere X image, they estimate that it's CO2 dominant coma. It's about eight to one ratio of CO2 to water, which is very bizarre and anomalous as it relates to comets. Of course, this is an interstellar object or interstellar comet, perhaps. Therefore, it's expected to have different ratios of these things. But we see that it has a huge coma about 700,000 kilometers in diameter, and that is half the size of the sun. We have this huge interstellar object flying through, top estimates of about 50 kilometers in diameter for the object itself and its coma, or again, this complex dusty plasma surrounding it, is very low density, but half the size of the sun and electromagnetically active, that is quite bizarre. But we do see now very clearly that 3i Atlas has an anti-sunward tail. So we see the direction of the sun there. We see its vector of motion. They are basically aligned right now. It's doing this close flyby of the sun. It's perihelion on October 30th or so. And it'll cut within the orbit of Mars. And we see now it is forming very clearly some sort of coma. So as it's getting closer and closer to the sun, that solar pressure is causing this coma to push out behind it. We even see it very faintly there in our higher frequency uh, measure of optical light. Again, right at that boundary of like ultraviolet. Um, but it is definitely getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So not only is this coma very, very large, it's also now extending behind the comet for a long time. And there's quite a long history of the electromagnetic dynamics of comets and their tails because they form these electric currents and they actually form these Birkeland currents that spiral behind them. So as 3i Atlas gets closer and closer and closer to the inner solar system and the sun is becoming more electromagnetically active and alive. And what we see is that often when we get big comets or even like Oumuamua in 2017 to fly through the inner solar system, we get enhanced solar activity and even sometimes increased geophysical energy here on earth like earthquakes. One day before its perihelion, we had an 8.2 magnitude earthquake in Mexico, the strongest of 2017. And so interstellar object 3i Atlas is much larger, traveling much faster. Again, its perihelion velocity is gonna be about 68 kilometers per second. That's if it doesn't do anything different. If it is some sort of technological craft perhaps, then it could slow down or could speed up, but we're not seeing really any indication of that yet, though it does have very unusual signature as it relates to its coma elemental composition. 
It's really enhanced with nickel as compared to iron, which is quite a bit different than most of the comments that we observe in our solar system. And that increase of nickel is going up much faster as it's getting closer and closer to the sun as compared to most other comets that we have observed from our own solar system. This eight to one ratio of CO2 to water is actually pretty similar to the atmospheric composition of Mars, which is quite interesting. It also has a reddish color. We can see that very clearly right here with our red optical imagery of 3i Alice. This is the wavelength of light that really shows 3i Alice the best. That was also the case back here with our initial imagery there, July 3rd, we see the clearest image of 3i Alice in the red wavelength. So it has a red, color to it, just like Mars. And there's a lot of interesting synchronicity between 3i Atlas and Mars. Not only is it doing a very close approach to Mars around October 3rd, it's also probably about the same size as Mars's moons. You have Phobos and Deimos, and they're all right in that tens of kilometers diameter zone. And well, 3i Atlas is estimated to be about five to 50 kilometers in diameter. So there's a lot of very interesting resonance between 3i Atlas and Mars. And right now it appears to be an interstellar comet. That is what the evidence is suggesting, but that does not diminish the fact that it's a very interesting object. And just because 3i Atlas is most likely an interstellar comet does not mean it's not significant as it relates to the dynamics within our solar system electromagnetically and also consciously, because we know that consciousness is more than, for example, math, or for example, space and time. Consciousness is everywhere. It's present at all scales. We have consciousness. Other things have consciousness too. You know, the butterfly flying outside your window, it has some degree of consciousness. Your pet dog, your pet cat, it has a personality, it has consciousness. And the most groundbreaking ideas as it relates to consciousness is that consciousness is actually an inherent property of the quantum field. What does that mean? Quantum represents the smallest observable part of a system. So basically it's our smallest resolution look. And therefore the quantum field is a field that is manifesting the smallest observable particles. And if consciousness is inherent in the quantum field, then consciousness is inherent in everything. And one of the primary attributes of consciousness is free will. So these particles are popping in, they're popping out of existence, right? It's all probabilistic once you go into quantum physics. Free will is the determining factor, you could argue, for why an electron decides to pop into a certain orbital versus a different thing or whatever. If consciousness is baked into the quantum field from which everything else manifests, which would be math and physics and of course our reality and life and more, then consciousness is in everything. And we see that you have higher states of consciousness connected to material things that are more complex and have these internested systems of energy, frequency, vibration, and resonance. So you can also add in general resonance theory. And so the more complex something is, the greater the degree it's consciousness. The earth is incredibly complex geophysically, has 50 lightning strikes a second, that is scale invariant to the neural spiking in our brain, and also generates the same frequencies, these Schumann resonances, as our brain waves, that's in that zero to 50 hertz range, also at the same strength, both in the electric field and in the magnetic field. So we see this scale invariance between ourselves, we know our con we're conscious, and then the Earth. Well, 3i Atlas, with this very large coma comprised of just neutral gas, a lot of CO2 and water, but also this complex dusty plasma, it also has these acoustic dust waves that propagate through it at, guess what, zero to 50 hertz. And there's all these other wave properties inherent to complex dusty plasmas. We know that they can go ahead and form these very ordered structures where they separate hot and cold components and there's clear boundaries between them. They even take on a crystalline structure, which is very interesting because what happens is these dust grains, they accumulate charge because of their size and electrons become very mobile the, mo the moment they're ionized. And as 3i Atlas gets closer and closer to the sun, 
more and more of the neutral gas surrounding it will ionize. Well, the moment you have that, these dust grains can take on charge. They can then start to either emit electrons under certain conditions, or they can then take them on. So they can both be positively and negatively charged, and they start to interact with each other, forming these crystalline structures. They have a clear cellular structure that they form in a way that's beyond really our current understanding. We need to do a lot more in situ measurements and also laboratory experiments with complex dusty plasma. Uh, they generate their own electromagnetic frequencies and those can propagate out. They have their own internal magnetic fields and electric fields. It sounds very similar to what happens in our brain and in our body. It's just at a different scale and it's beyond our normal conception of understanding. But there is a tremendous amount of evidence suggesting that consciousness is also attributable to plasma, the fourth state of matter. It's just not a consciousness like we are used to, but in many ways it is very, very similar if we look at its internal processes and the internal electromagnetic processes happening within our brain, which seems to be a receiver of consciousness from the unified field. And so we have our own kind of spiritual expression and our consciousness comes in from the unified field and our body and mind is really just a receiver for expressing this in the 3D realm. Well, what sort of consciousness does 3i Atlas have? How is it expressing that as it moves through the solar system? Is this coincidental? Has it been traveling through interstellar space for you know, eons and eons for a reason to intersect with the solar system? Is it just a complete coincidence? Was it maybe sent our way from an advanced intelligence from within our solar system, for example, the Oort cloud or even beyond? Keep in mind that we don't know where 3i Atlas was before its first observation. They're gonna start looking through prior all sky surveys before July 1st. They are starting to pick up some of its distances at like six astronomical units and more. But the Oort cloud, this hypothetical region that houses all these comets that fly in, that's way, 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 way out beyond the edge of even the Kuiper belt. We're never going to see 3i Atlas and anything from there because we've never actually directly seen something in the Oort cloud with our modern astronomical gear. So maybe it was accelerated quickly from the Oort cloud for some reason. We know that we had the wow signal in 1977 emerge from effectively the constellation of Sagittarius, which is the center of our Milky Way galaxy. That is where you have the galactic center. Well, 3i Atlas also came in very quickly from the constellation of Sagittarius, which is again where the galactic center is. And so we've been emitting all these signals out now for a hundred plus years and that's enough time to reach certain parts of our interstellar neighborhood and maybe something sent 3i Atlas our way. It could just be a complete coincidence that's flying through our solar system. I personally don't believe in coincidence. It's very striking that it's coming in exactly along the ecliptic plane, only a five degree difference from that. It's doing something but it may not be alien ships flying out or an alien invasion this October, but it does display all the features of a comet, though it is quite different than the comets of our solar system. So we have to keep in mind that because it is interstellar, it is going to be quite a bit different. It's also very, very large. I'll keep you up to date with everything that's happening with 3i Atlas. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. I release videos almost daily on what is happening with our Earth geophysically. So this is like earthquakes, volcanoes, also solar activity, space weather, planetary resonances, and these sort of cosmic forces. We have two solar storms inbound right now at this moment in time. They're going to be impacting in about 48 hours. You can watch my space weather report on that right there. I think we're going to see a lot of solar activity this fall as a result of 3i Atlas. I'll keep you up to date. Thank you all for watching. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you all very soon.